if you have anything to drink. I don't know if you have something you want to sip on, but get it. Get your tea, get your alcohol, get whatever, get your coffee. I have Starbucks coffee today. Just regular shaking espresso grande. So I'm ready, I got my go-go juice. Every single time y'all see a red flag or every single time something looks like, girl, you do Lulu, take a sip. I'm so genuinely nervous. It's not even funny, but I'm just really nervous because I know that the people who are watching are definitely from Southern Miss. You in my business? Yeah, don't do that. And I mean, I wouldn't blame you, I'd be too. So. Today I'm going to do a story time about my five year, four, I would say four and a half year situationship. And I call it a situationship because like, we were never a boyfriend and girlfriend. We were never an official couple. I'm being so vulnerable with you guys right now. This is so slick, embarrassing telling you guys how mentally weak I was. When I tell you four and a half years, I'm not kidding. Like, I don't know if you can see this, but I had to write down everything that happened so that I know I didn't miss anything. And if I did, it, this itself is enough. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do a disclaimer. I understand how dumb, I understand how Delulu I look, I understand how stupid I may have been to some people and people are gonna use those words. I'm not using those words, people are gonna use them words. Maybe this can help somebody, maybe this can help your younger sister, your older sister, a brother, I don't know. If you do know who I'm talking about, please don't say his name in the comments, I will delete it. Let's just get to like the basics ground of everything, okay? So me and him met in 2018. Uh, it was my freshman year. He's about three to four years older than me, so I was 18, he was- 21. The way that we met, I feel like, was through mutuals. So like, I always looked at him a certain way. His friend told him about me, whatever. I think I DM'd him first. So it was back and forth for a couple of times. It was pretty innocent. I would say the first time that we met in person, I was a cheerleader so I stayed during break and he was also an athlete and he had to stay during break too. So while everybody was gone, I asked him if he could come over to my dorm and throw my trash away. My trash. Be so for real. But I was scared to throw it out by itself because there was nobody else in that dorm. It was in the back and I just was being a little extra, I'm not gonna lie. It was an excuse. And he came over to throw my trash away. After he took the trash out, he stayed in my dorm room. We talked, um, nothing crazy, literally just talks, blah, blah, blah. He had to go to practice, so he left. That's it, right? So, I'm going to fast forward. We were talking for I don't know how long, right? But not, I wouldn't say not talk talking, just talking as a mutual friends, okay? So the first time we hung out at his dorm, it was in a study room area that we have, but it's inside your dorm. So once we left, his study room dorm. He was walking me to my dorm. While we were walking across the street to get to the uh, CPN parking lot, I heard like running footsteps. I'm literally like, oh gosh, like what's going on? Well, this girl runs up to us, let's call her Sierra. And she was yelling at him, like full on yelling at him, talking to him like he's crazy, which he is. She was yelling at him. He was like, she didn't even go into my dorm. Technically, I didn't go inside his dorm. So I guess he was using that as like a we didn't do nothing or anything like that. All we did was schoolwork. I was a little confused. I was like stunned because that never happened to me. I walked away and then I went to my dorm. Later on, I guess I was leaving my dorm to my car to the parking lot. I ran into Sierra. I I guess I was crying or something because even though like me and him weren't serious I was just like I guess I do have feelings for this guy at the time she was a desk assistant so I think that's how she knew that I guess like my card was there I don't know if she can see like if he had a guest over I really don't know but she saw me crying and she was explaining how she saw my name pop up on his phone a couple of times like on snapchat she's like oh so you're Gigi and she wasn't aggressive towards me at all because I generally like I respect her so much for that because I generally did not know about her I told her like he's been buying me food that we've been hanging out so fast forward he's obviously gave me a story where she was just an old friend or something or just a desk assistant I don't know some obviously a regular answer that a guy will give when he's getting caught. Fast forward, red flag number two. We got a little bit more serious, right, as the time went on. Oh, 
one day me and my teammate were leaving practice like all my teammates were all going towards the athletic center right we practiced on the field at the time so we went towards the athletic center to go through it to leave center i had a teammate pull up or not pull up but like come to me and she was like are you still talking to let's give him a name we're gonna call him my uh co-worker's name julio so <laughs> Are you still talking to Julio? And I was like, yeah, like, what are you talking about, yeah? Oh, he's been texting a volleyball player lately and they've been talking about hanging out. They've been kind of getting close. They've been talking for a little bit now. Still to this day, I struggle with this, but when something sets me off, and I have panic attacks immediately. When something says we need to talk or did anybody tell you or this this and that I, my heart immediately drops and my body gets numb and i instantly have a panic attack and that causes me to think straight strictly with emotions so after she said that i got into a emotional attack stance and i went straight into the athletic center and i went straight into the recovery room and looking back now it's very unprofessional because one i'm a cheerleader two he's an athlete and that right there is already like they don't like relations with that and that could cause me to not go to away games this is and that so it was just kind of like stupid on my part but i marched into the athletic center and i went straight up to his table that he was getting you know work on and i confronted him then and there in front of everybody i was crying I was asking him, who is this volleyball girl? Who have you been texting? This, this, and that. He decided to take it outside because he didn't obviously didn't want to talk in front of everybody. So we went outside. And that was the first and only time he has ever given me his phone to look through. I said, let me see the messages then since it's not nothing. And what he gave me the messages, he gave me his phone, and I went through it. Mind you, I didn't I don't think I went all the way to the top, but I did go through it. I saw the things talking about like hanging out or smoking or something like that just like regular interests like small talk and stuff like that I, didn't find, I mean i didn't find anything like crazy but still you're still talking to another female talking about hanging out he was like we never actually hung out like i was he basically admitted to just entertaining her okay just because a, a man has not met up with a female doesn't mean they're not cheating so if you establish a type of relationship with somebody who is like okay we're we're um exclusive is that the word we're not talking to nobody we're not interested in nobody else it's just solely me and you and they're still texting females on the side talking about hanging up talking about interest you know getting to know that person etc that's like not okay in my opinion because therefore you're not just talking to me you're talking to other women like either way if you have to hide it or if you have to delete anything from your phone from your partner because you know they wouldn't like seeing that that's cheating red flag number three i'm ambassador for fitness fashionist as i know i am a personal trainer at crunch fitness and i love the look and the aesthetic of these clothes you can get anything from yoga pants jumpsuits sports bras shorts skirts bathing suits rompers all that good jazz and it's so affordable and the material is Mwah, chef kiss we are an online based retailer who work with suppliers that carry and overstock on inventory to bring you trendy styles at an affordable price by clearing up their overstock inventory we're able to pass on those savings to you so if you're a little fashionista and you're a little gym girly like me you need to check their website out you can use my code which is gg rivera ff this is going to give you 10 percent off your order tell me why the teammate that told me about the volleyball oh don't clap the teammate that told me about the volleyball player was in his dorm she was in his dorm i want to say either before or after she told me about this situation one i think she was trying to if it was after my conclusion was trying to see if she can get what i had obviously i didn't have him females are, are messy like that if they want to test out how much you have a man they will literally try to tempt that man into getting with them and then they just have like a one up on you that's just how females are sometimes if it was before i guess she figured out that me and him were talking or whatever blah, blah. i confronted him about it and at first he lied about it but then he claimed that and then he claimed that she was a butterface and that she was for the team what does it have to do with anything like first of all that's even worse like why are you inviting this girl into your dorm and he was like well she wanted to come inside my dorm she wanted to come over and just talk and that's all we did was talk like i didn't do anything to her i didn't want her she's a butterface she's for everybody the whole team has her in my head it's like is that not like another reason to avoid her like i'm so confused that looks bad on your part 
Anyway, so shout out to the teammate who told me about the volleyball girl and then ended up being in his dorm. So I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know. Oh, and another red flag. I confronted him. Me and him were fighting about something. And I confronted him about something or whatever. And he was like, instead of worrying about this, you need to be worrying about your bestie, your teammate bestie hitting me up and trying to get with me. And I was like, who, who? This right here, and this is my fault. I take complete blame of it. This caused me to question all my bestie teammates. So I asked him, I was like, who, who, who? Like I was an owl, who, who, who? He wouldn't tell me. So I asked like a couple of my teammate besties and I asked this one girl. She took me in her underneath her wing like day one. I didn't even have a place to stay freshman year. And she stayed, like, she let me stay with her. And I asked, you weren't the person that he's talking about, right? Like Julio's not talking about you. And she got so utterly offended that I questioned her loyalty to me that she completely cut me off. It hurt me to lose a friend over somebody. And at the time I was just like, well, him over anybody. And that just, it was so selfish of me and so immature of me to believe him over her. At the end of the day, he told me that he liked making up stories and he liked getting me upset because it enjoyed him to see me upset. It, like it, satisfied him to see me angry with him to see how i react etc so that story might not even be true to this day so red flag number five after i continued talking to him for a while why i don't know maybe because it was still first maybe within that first year or whatever and i just felt like it would maybe go somewhere i don't know what i was doing i was hinting at a relationship i was kind of saying like hey you no know, i i really like you his excuses i have them all listed out right here all of his excuses as to why he wouldn't be in a relationship with me he said at first the very first when like freshman year was like i need my own apartment he didn't have a car wanted to be financially stable which is understandable he does admit to not being able to stick to one person or to be loyal like that was just his thing that's just who he was <sighs> the way that he was raised okay and for some reason he would pick and choose when it bothered him that i was still in school so once he did graduate before me he was saying things like you're still in school the age difference was an issue it wasn't an issue when you approached me it wasn't an issue when i was 18 and you were 21 it wasn't an issue then what's the issue now all right red flag number six i guess i don't know if y'all thought but sierra's still in the picture the girl who ran up on him her name popped up on his phone one time and i asked him why he had still communication with her you know what was he doing his excuse was he was still in communication with her because she does his homework y'all see that yellow highlight against my forehead i got a bright yellow truck next to me hello sierra was in the picture in his life for probably the whole time i was in there too I wasn't still with him in despite of her. He just kept telling me these things that brainwashing me to believe him. I wasn't with him knowing that he was still with her. I genuinely thought and felt like she was completely out the picture and that they were, they just were a friend. Ah, I'm so stupid. His excuses for her was she just does his homework, which I don't even know if that's true. I don't even know what he has told her about me. All of these excuses might not even be a thing. She just does his homework. She just cleans his laundry for him. She lets him use his car or gets rides from her because he didn't have a car at the time. She helped him pay rent. This is everything he's telling me. Like this might not even be true y'all. So I'm not telling y'all that this girl does this. His whole excuse was, oh, I'm just using her. And my young self, I was just like, I guess if you guys have that type of relationship. And I asked him, what do you do to get this? I asked him, I was like, what do you give her? Do you pay her? And he was like, no, she just does it for free. I was like, you don't do nothing? You don't give her nothing? He was like, no. Yeah, okay. Time goes on or whatever, and I'm still talking to this guy. Mind you, I was loyal to this guy, although we weren't in a relationship. So whenever good guys try to talk to me, I would be like, no, I'm sorry, I'm talking to somebody. And I would do that for years. And this man wasn't even my boyfriend. It made me lose a chance with really good guys, really good men. At the time I was walking to his house, 
I heard a car skirt like right in the driveway. And I was like, who's here? Like, it was Sierra. She asked me some like detailed questions and I answered her and she gave me and provided me detailed answers about their relationship. She basically let me know what was up between them again. Well, I banged on his door and he opened it. And when he opened it, I went in and he closed the door and he locked it and she was banging on the door. He went out there. I don't know what they said because I didn't eavesdrop on it. And she just left pretty quickly. I don't know what he told her. I wish I did, but I don't know what he told her. Me and him got into a really bad, really big argument. He was just telling me to leave after that, to get out and to go home and that he was gonna force me out. That He was like, I'm gonna call my cousins. I was like, what are you doing? I walked back. Obviously, I came back to him. Why? Okay, I'll say why at the end. I'm gonna answer some of y'all questions. Okay. Put up a Instagram poll asking me, what do you guys wanna know about the five-year situationship? Y'all asked me some questions, so I will be answering them at the end of the video. So, red flag number seven or whatever. One day, oh, one day, y'all, I was in lab class. We were doing this lab project where this girl, let's call her Ariel, Ariel was standing next to me. I had like a feeling trying to pursue Julio because I saw her likes underneath his pictures or he was liking her pictures, one or the other. And I was like, side eye, side eye, like red flag. Like, why are you liking girls pictures? At the time I was like that. I purposely made my lock screen a picture of me and him that we took after a game. I put it as my lock screen. I put my phone face up like this next to me on the table and I kept tapping it. So like when you tap it, you know how it just goes like that. I kept like checking the time. I know she was looking at my lock screen. I'm so silly. I left early because I was like, School! Fuck all this boo! What the f Somebody texted me. I don't know who texted me or if somebody called me or whatever or if she texted me. I don't know. But somebody was like, Ariel wanted to know if me and Julio talked or were still talking or what our relationship was. It worked. The bait that I put out there reeled her in. And I texted her. I was like, me and him are talking. Like, what's up? She was really sweet about it. These men tell these females anything. There are some females who don't give a crap if you are in a relationship with a guy, they're still gonna try to get that guy from you. But this girl wasn't like that, and the um, Sierra girl wasn't like that, in my opinion. Like, well, I just wanted to let you know, he was at my house, we did this, we did that, or whatever. And again, panic attack right away. I started crying in the fresh. Like, you guys know what the fresh is. It's like our cafeteria. And my friend came over. She was like, babe, like, do you wanna go like in the corner? I was like, no, just let them see me. <laughs> He was right about to go into practice uh, and called him. He like briefly said, no, that's not true, blah, 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 whatever, and hung up because he had to go to practice, right? Later on, I asked him, he admitted to it, that she came to his house, picked him up, and went back to her place. Obviously, he told me some type of thing that it was a long time ago. Yeah, okay, a long time ago, like last week. I forgave him again. Sierra, I pulled up right before we were supposed to take chair pictures because I don't know why, but I just pulled up on his house. I, I think I was gonna do a drive-by to see if her car was outside or something. As I pulled up, I saw his door open. His dog had ran out into the street and she was right there at the door frame. I was like, oh, so that's who dog's sitting. Cause I, I think I asked him who was dog sitting. He said a friend and I confronted him in the doorway he told me to leave he told me to go home there's a couple of incidents that i caught him in person he would flip his demeanor so easily said whatever he needed to say to let me leave he could literally look at me and be like i don't give one crap about you i want you to go home and never come back what you just told me you loved me yesterday i'm so confused so i left sobbing first of all my friend drove with me so she witnessed kind of like everything the sierra girl ended up texting my number she texted my phone number and was telling me the truth about everything but before she did that i texted her i called julio and i was like hey what is she gonna tell me what have y'all been doing what's going on i'm confused i thought she just did your homework you know what his response was you ask her bruh that's his response and then he put his phone on off because he went into the air for an away game she was telling me everything and my heart was just breaking so bad this was this was a really bad one too just because i was about to take cheer pictures and i wasn't getting ready i told my teammates like my besties that i wasn't gonna go to cheer pictures because i was too depressed 
because now by this point we did set boundaries that we weren't gonna talk to nobody Lou was sitting on my wall you know those things where it's like a music video and you're sliding down the window and it's like raining that's how I was they were trying to get me to get ready they were banging on my door this was about sophomore junior year for sure i wasn't replying i wasn't responding i wasn't answering i wasn't unlocking the door i lived in hillcrest you shared a bathroom with the room next to you so two so four people shared the bathroom technically three since i was the only one in there right, these are some good friends they knocked on the girls dorm next to me and they were banging on their door and they're like hey my friend is in there we have cheer pictures and she's not responding can we please go through your go through your bathroom to get to her and they went in these random folks dorm went through their bathroom and got into my dorm and physically dressed me i was crying so bad i was so mentally exhausted and physically like heart was hurt and i just didn't move they were grabbing my shoes grabbing my uniform putting my shoes on for me tying my shoes on when i tell y'all i felt like i was at my lowest like those that was like the first time i felt so lower than low i couldn't even move i was in shock you guys might say some bad things about that but when you guys i don't know if you guys ever witnessed that but when you are mentally and physically on the inside hurt and genuinely shocked and depressed like you feel like you're at your lowest it's like you can't like move i don't know this is getting so dark it's just i couldn't move i was just crying so hard that i just felt there was no purpose of me moving i was just there kind of fixed up my makeup and then we went to go take cheer pictures but shout out to daisha and lydia because without them i probably i don't know i wouldn't make it to cheer pictures i know that <laughs> how i forgave him i think obviously he was telling me that he was gonna change that once he gets back he's not gonna do any of that and that we're gonna talk about it one day i was at his house he told me i had to leave because he had to go to practice i was just like this schedule isn't adding up so if you go to practice why do i have to leave i literally am spending the night again he just kept making some excuses for it and he didn't know how late practice was gonna be and i was just like okay as i was walking out i was like have fun with the girl you finna have over and he said okay and i just like left throughout that whole day he wasn't answering me he wasn't responding to me he wasn't answering me it got to like nighttime, and he wasn't answering me and i'm just like bro like you be texting me so why aren't you texting me now okay fine we're done you're obviously with the girl i'm about to pull up and i'm about to get my stuff and I was being a little petty because I gifted him something for haircutting and I gifted it to him and I was like, I'm going to pull up. I need all my stuff, even the stuff that I gave you, which I don't believe. And if you give somebody a gift, I don't believe that you should give it. You should get it back just because that person does wrong for you. I pulled up and I saw Sierra's car. Yeah, I saw Sierra's car. And what I do? Panic attack, emotional gg came out i started banging on his window i started banging on his door he wouldn't answer and i was just like banging on his window at that point it broke a whole nail he opened the door and he got really upset that i was there he was like come on and get your stuff like i'm not gonna curse on here but he said other curse words i was on the way to his room and i turned around to him mind you the girl is there and she's following him and following me and I turned around and I was like, I thought you loved me, blah, blah, blah. And the girl was like, honey, I could have told you he didn't love you. Like, he was like, she was like, I could have told you that. Well, she was right. He didn't love me. And when it comes to like females, I will never get mad at the female. It's in my opinion, if that's your man, truly, you need to get mad at him. I don't understand why females attack females first and then the man. He's the one that let it happen. I was like so all those times that you told me that you loved me was a lie like you were lying to me he was like yeah i was like so you don't love me he was like no and i was like <laughs> what? so that was a lie i got close into his face and i put my hands on him mind you it wasn't like a like i wasn't punching him or anything but either way females should not put their hands on a man and the girl was in between us so it it was kind of like i was all up on her I was trying to get all up on him because I was getting angry and I was yelling at him and stuff. She pushed me out of her way. Like, she pushed me away from them in general. So, me and her got to tussling, got to fight in. It wasn't, like, a big fight. We got pulled apart. I got my stuff. And then I left. That night was probably the second deepest, worst feeling I've ever had. Because, one, the words hurt me the most. 
he told me that he lied about everything he was telling me and for that to be said in front of the female the other female was like dang she won like she got him i was just nothing to him and everything that he's been telling me was a lot that probably made me feel like my lowest his excuse about that was later on he told me that he lied in front of her about <laughs> about lying to me he was like i just said that so i can get you out the house i just said that so you can leave i didn't mean it i was just saying anything that you um that she wanted to hear and he was like i didn't lie about loving you he and then he said i have love for you but I'm not in love with you. <laughs> oh, my heart was broken. I was like, so you don't love me. Like, you care about me. It's basically what you're saying. But you just, you're just, you don't love me. Ugh. Like, that just makes me, ugh. And then he was like, but I can tell you this is the closest that I've ever been in love with somebody since, like, I don't know, one of his exes, like, in Juco or whatever. I always took that. I was like, okay, we're almost there. He almost loved me. Like, ew, girl, if you didn't... I should have left the moment I messaged him. Red flag number 10. I don't know what red flag we're on. He ended up moving to an apartment with a roommate, right? He never let me inside the house or never let me inside of the apartment. So usually we would hang out in the car or at the time I only had my own apartment, we would hang out at my apartment. And he told me, like truthfully, he was like, I don't want to lie to you, but guess who the roommate was? Guess who the roommate was? Guess who the roommate was? <laughs> It's not funny, but it's funny. I can laugh about it now. It was Sierra. And he was moving in. His excuse about moving in with Sierra was because she could pay half of the rent. Or, like, she paid most of the rent. He always slept in the guest bedroom. Mind you, I don't even know if that apartment has two bedrooms. And then he was say, like, sometimes I sleep on the couch. On the couch. Okay. He was saying he was staying with her until he was able to move out. He was also stating, like, we're genuinely just friends. She still has a boyfriend. I live in a separate room. We're nothing like that. We're not together. We're not emotionally together. We're not physically together. And again, I believed that. So me and him kept like sitting in the car and just hanging out and talking. I still would always try to see the good in him. And I was trying to see if he can see the good in me. If you can take away from this video, no matter what you do to a man, no matter how loyal you are, no matter what you give him, no matter what you buy him, if a man doesn't want you, if a man isn't ready for you, none of that matters. So save your energy and save your money. I think it was, I don't know if it was before or after I found out that there were roommates that me and her texted about the situation and we apologized to each other about, I don't know, if, I don't wanna say apologize, but we both agreed that um, he was in the wrong that we both been getting told things that weren't true. And I think as women, we can accept that. And I think as women, we don't have to love each other, me and her, but we can agree on being cordial and stuff like that. So after that, I took a, a little break after that, a, a long break actually. I would say during this break is when I did start, you know, try to start being not as loyal. I'm not going to say loyal because loyalty is so important to me in a relationship. I have loyalty tattooed on my back. That's how, like, important loyalty is to me because what's 21 Savage say? He said, I'd rather have loyalty than love because love don't really mean jack. See, love is just a feeling. You can love somebody still stabbing their back. It don't take much to love. You can love somebody just by being attached. See, loyalty is an action. You can, you can love or hate me and still have my back. Like, facts. After I started not being as loyal to him, I did start to dabble in, like, guys who genuinely liked me. And I'm talking about liked me. Like, liked me. Like, really messed up in regards to giving good people a chance. My first ex, he treated me very well. And I... I hadn't had that in a long time so when I actually found somebody who treated me like a queen who treated me really good it made me freak out and so I pushed them away and then allowed Julio to come back into my life because I was comfortable with that a lot of times some people take lust and comfort and confuse it with love at that time I feel like I did and oh I'm starting to preach but God is gonna put you in uncomfortable positions and situations to make you grow i should have allowed myself to be uncomfortable and then i would have you know not allowed julio to come back up and put me in a deeper darker hole 
But since I wasn't comfortable with being uncomfortable, I allowed myself to go back to Julio. And that's some real deal mental thing. And I don't know if you guys ever been through that, but it's just the truth. I never displayed it on social media. So now that I'm actually saying it, it's probably like, dang girl, like I didn't know he was going through all that, but I was, so. So fast forward, he ended up getting his own apartment, right? Just one bedroom apartment by himself. Now his excuse for not being with me, cause I was like, well, you have your apartment now, what's up? His excuse for not being with me was that I was still in college. I was all the way down there. And what I mean by all the way down there was he lived 15 minutes away from me. He was like, I don't know what you doing on campus. You with them boys, blah, blah, blah. He, I guess he thought I was just out there. And then he was like, well, you haven't graduated. I even told him like, if you know we're, we're not going to be together, why do you keep allowing me in? Why do you keep allowing me to call you when you're answering? Why do you keep allowing me in your apartment? He was like, no matter what you call, I'm going to answer you. If you want to come into my house, I'm going to let you come into my house. Like the door was always open is what he was saying. And what was I? Comfortable. He never had his door shut. If his doors are always open and I'm so tempted to always go through those doors, I'm going to go through those doors. It would have helped if he would have shut those doors, but I should have shut them myself. So he, he always was there. I always had access to him, which was making me comfortable because I knew I always had him. By this time, I think I was like a junior or a senior. I've been in college for four years and he has been with me every single semester, every single hardship. He knew everything about me. Like he low-key watched me grow up. He low-key is watching me turn into a woman that I'm becoming like granted everything the good and the bad and so i just felt so comfortable with him because he knew me well, he knows my darkest secrets i can't leave now at that point i wanted to say emotionally i started detaching it's time to start time to start slowly separating myself because i'm about to graduate i only know it's gonna be worse from there because i'm about to move back home to georgia and he lived in mississippi and if we can't get it together 15 minutes apart who gonna get it together five hours apart? I would say by that point, the only thing that kept me going was trauma bond. At that point, I was emotionally gone, but the trauma bond was so real that I stayed. And if you're dealing with trauma bond, I am so sorry that you're going through that. It's not a fun thing. It's not good for your mental health or physical health. It is a domestic violence issue as well, or just a mentally abusive situationship. So one time in his house or his apartment, I found a necklace and it said like a name on it or something like that. Like, whose is this? Like, who's this name? He lied. At this point, you would think he would tell me the truth about him being with other females, but no, he didn't. I think he said that name was like somebody of his family member or he didn't know what it was, where it came from, blah, 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 whatever. So I went through his followings and I went through his, his followings on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. I see no names of that sort. And so I was like, so who is it? It's not your family member. He admitted it was a date from Tinder. Come on now, dog. Come on, man. It was a girl from Tinder, basically, that he was on Tinder. Mind you, before this, I did see the um, black dating app on his phone. And I was like, I was just like, is, am I even your type? Like, do you, do you even find me attractive? I'm so confused. You're still on dating apps. Like, why do you have it? His excuse was, I just scroll on Tinder in black. It's just because, like, I'm bored. Like, I just be scrolling. I don't swipe on nobody. I just scroll. You don't swipe on nobody? Really? He swooped on somebody this time. He was saying how she was, like, an older woman. She was, like, 40, 30 to 40 years old. He's, like, 26, I think, at the time. I asked him if intimate things had happened. At first, he said yes. Like, at first, he did say, like, intimate things had happened. And so later, when we talked about it again, he was like, nah, I'm just kidding. Nothing happened between us. Just lied to you because what? He likes to see me upset. He likes to see me riled up. He knows I'm not going to leave. So it's an, a form of entertainment to him at this point. Then he admitted to still doing it. Like, how sick can you be that you enjoy seeing somebody suffer from a broken heart crying in front of you because you know that they're gonna not leave but here's another thing here's another situation that happened one time i was leaving brewskis if you guys don't know what brewskis is brewskis is a local bar in hattiesburg that i am a very big fan about okay so i just relocated i was leaving brewskis and i pulled up because i told him i was gonna come back i was at his house that day and i was like look i'm gonna come back 
I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna go to Brewski's with Lydia, and I'm gonna come back. So I pulled up from Brewski's and I knocked on his door, no answer. I called him, I know he can hear the call, no answer. I went to his door or his window and I started banging on it, like nonstop. So I know you're up now because you can hear me banging on your window. Y'all not gonna get a sleep cause of me! I saw him like peek through the blinds, unless it wasn't him, but it might've been her or him. So as I heard the front door open and close, I started walking towards the front door. As I'm walking towards the front door, a female walks out. I've never seen this girl in my life. I don't even know if she knows me or she knows of me. And so she passed me and I just looked at her and she chuckled and like shook her head. I don't think it was like a demeaning way towards me. I think it was like, I can't believe this type thing. It sucks when somebody that you depend on like emotionally to like kind of be there for you is the one that hurts you. I felt so low and I didn't know who to go to at the time so I stayed at his house. The way of how like distraught I was, it wasn't even safe to drive for real. He was like, just stay here. I hated him so much yet I needed him to comfort me. I'm so used to him being my comfort and being the person that I vent to. And then he ended up hurting me and I was just like, oh, this is the person that I need to talk to, but he's the one I need to talk to, talk, talk about. I wanna talk to you about these hard times and it's just like crap, you're the one who made me have these hard times. That's kind of like what in the predicament that I was at the time. I mentally couldn't really leave and I didn't want to stay. So I don't know, it's weird. And when I did ask him who was that, he claimed that it was his cousin. Oh! oh do cousins have sleepovers? Take that what you will. I'm not judging nobody. That was the day where I really felt like trauma is not worth it. That was the day where I was like, I'm done. You're done. We're done. I should have left earlier and not have put myself in this because at the end of the day, I put myself through all that. And me about to graduate that semester coming up, I was just like, it's time to let you go. And I've been in a long distance relationship before and I was loyal. I did everything that I could. Obviously, it's the other partner who has to also try just as hard as you. And I knew that wasn't even the case if I was five minutes away. So why is that going to be the case when I'm gone? I kept giving him chances because after my first love, the guy who cheated on me long distance wise, the reason why he broke up with me is because I wasn't allowing him to get the chance that he deserved or like I told him I was gonna give him that chance. And then I was just like, oh, okay. So since I didn't give him a chance, let me try to give this guy multiple chances since that's where I went wrong in my last relationship. And it sounds dumb, but that's what I was thinking. Okay, I didn't get him a chance like I was supposed to. Let me do right by this guy by giving him chances. And I gave him too many chances i was definitely kind of filling the void of my ex or i was never fully healed from my ex and that was one thing that i think made me stay because he was the first person that i kind of got attached to after my ex uh, kept listening to his words instead of his actions feel like advice wise to yes take their words with a grain of salt but when they don't start doing what they're going to say that means they're lying to you and at the time i cared for him more than myself in some areas where we were really rocky, I lost a lot of weight. My anxiety skyrocketed. My standards and my self-esteem got so low because I kept saying, why am I not enough? Why is this not enough? Why is my love not enough? Why is my loyalty not enough? Why are my looks not enough? Why can't somebody accept my love? Why can't somebody love me for me? Why do I have to feel like I have to not be myself in front of him for him to love me? Because there were some times that if he was, if I wasn't catching him with another female, he he would knock me down like personality wise so I would sing in the shower and he would tell me how annoying that was I just don't know why I just kept making excuses for it and I just felt like I had to stay with him because he would tell me he loved me but at the time I was just like if he leaves who else is gonna love me no one else is gonna love me and I'm being so real with you guys there's a lot of females out there who has felt like this and who have felt like this and I just want you guys to know that you are not alone when it comes to feeling like this at all so now I'm gonna answer the questions that you guys asked on my Instagram why did y'all break up we were never girlfriend and boyfriend like I said so technically we didn't break up but we did stop talking we were always off and on for like four and a half years and the moment that made me leave was when I told him I was going to come back over and he still had another female and I knew that I was done when I wanted him to comfort, comfort me 
after hurting me. Are y'all still together? And no, we're not still together. So true, when your personality doesn't match your looks, you turn like ugly. Me and him ended on like mutual terms, decent terms, because at the end of the day, don't ever hold hate in your heart. I do wish him luck though on whatever female he does come across and I hope he does treat her right. Why be and situationship, I guess why be in a situationship? I don't know why. I never even knew a situationship was a thing. I thought I was just leading up to a big picture. Like, don't be in a situationship. Learn to have boundaries, learn. I'm still learning this myself, by the way. Like, I still need a lot of work. But learn to have boundaries, learn to what you can and cannot accept. Learn what your standards are and keep them. Somebody who is going to come along and they're gonna meet your standards and you're gonna meet their standards. And always have God at the center of your relationship. Somebody said, did he cheat on you? In my opinion, yes. So, But everybody's form of cheating is different. If you had a do-over, would you change it or would you run it back? I wouldn't change it because obviously I've learned all the lessons that I've learned. The only thing I would change is how late I left because everything happens for a reason. Was it with that cheerleader you were dating? I'm an OG fan of hers, by the way. No, it wasn't him. If you guys, if you guys are following me that long, woo, that's great. That wasn't him. He was, I wasn't in a situation ship with him. Even after we broke up, we weren't talking. Like we weren't, we weren't gonna do that on and off stuff. It wasn't like that. I think that's it everyone. That was a lot. I don't ever wanna be down that lane again. What I would say to take away from this is don't listen to words, listen to actions. If you're in college, I suggest you focus on your studies. And I also think a big question to ask yourself is, would I allow my son or daughter be in this relationship? If you're also getting out of a situation, no contact. That's the best thing that I've have, I have ever done. No contact. Love yourself. If you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you going to love somebody else? And don't ever let a man dictate your work. And if you are in a relationship or if you're in a situation and you guys both agree to be loyal, if you're watching this video, be loyal. Okay, Pookie? Oh, please be nice in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And peace, love, happiness as always. Do something kind to at least one person today and have a great day, night, or morning. God bless.